From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a Tuesday, and we have a good show on tap for you, as always. I sound like a broken record. I always say that. We wouldn't be doing the show if it wasn't good, but this is one that's an issue, uh, I think, important to an awful lot of people here in the Middle Tennessee area, especially in a certain portion of Metro. As the discussion continues, and there's going to be a, a hearing and a public hearing and second vote tonight on the proposed gas compression station. Now, you know, you hear that, and it's been in the news of late. The controversy of it coming in and whether or not it's actually safe, if it's going in a place that is too close to people in facilities like Walden's Puddle, uh, you know, and, and, you know, whether or not it's progress that's going to have to come through here or not. But there has been a lot of publicity about it. And if you're just getting into this now, we're going to background you on the basics with a piece that Ben Hall did in just a moment. But uh, we're going to talk about the issue today and uh, and take your phone calls and kind of get into what it's all about and why you should be concerned, whether you live here or you don't, because who knows, maybe one of these days one of them will come near a home where you live. Uh, with us this morning to talk about it's Bill Robertson, Concerned Citizens for a Safe Environment is Against the Plan. Good morning to you, sir. Nice to have you on. Nice to be here, Nick. Thanks I for having say, me. You, by the way, we weren't going to have you just alone this morning. Uh, well, yeah, I was going to be here, of course, with you, <laughs> but we were also going to have a, a representative from the Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company. That's the organization that is putting in the compressor or wants to put in the compressor. Um, chose not to send a representative today, offered up possibly to send a representative at some point where there wouldn't be more or less the debate uh, scenario here, which I didn't envision this at all, really, as being a debate. I was going to let you and the other individual just talk about the merits one way or the other, but they chose not to come. Their loss, your show, we'll get into it, and we'll try to be as fair as possible to bring up all the points. But let me ask you, Bill, before we get to Bill, uh, Ben's story, just to give people more of a background, I think you really want to watch it because it's interesting about the safety issues. For you, Tonight, there's going to be the second reading, or second uh, vote, correct? Yeah, this is the second vote on an ordinance that would restrict uh pipeline compressor stations to land zoned industrial. Okay, which would essentially, let's not get too technical here, all right, my friend, let's just get into the basics. This vote tonight, if that happened, I mean it couldn't go where it goes. At least five okay. local or ordinances, yes. The Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company proposes to build a 26-acre industrial facility on 80 acres of beautiful forested land construct an industrial gas compressor station that in North Davidson County on White Street Pike between Greenbrier and Morgan Roads. That's right. Okay, um, an area there a lot of people live around there? Yes, a lot of people live there. Okay, and this is something that uh, uses uh, massive turbines to push gas through the pipeline. This is a, a very large operation to transport shale gas from the East Coast up in West Virginia um, to the Gulf Coast. So it's not even natural gas that would stay here with us. No, it's not natural, and it's not even going to stay in the U.S. This is that it might basically be for export. It is for uh, to make liquefied natural gas that's going to be exported, most likely to, to the Far East. China is probably the biggest customer out there. Okay. Now um, we talk about how Metro Council is looking at this and maybe put some restrictions on where they can place this, but isn't this sanctioned by the federal government? And so, you know, regardless of what happens near Metro, hopefully the feds listen to it, but still ultimately they make the call, right? Yes. The, the, federal, uh, the federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC as they, uh, the acronym, they can preempt local ordinances. So I even if we get a local ordinance passed, um, it can be preempted, but according to their webpage that we've read very carefully, they pay attention to local ordinances because it's a reflection of the will of the people of the of Davidson County in this case. Sure, um, as they should, I would as think. They sh as we hope they would. Bill, let me ask you this then, um, and we'll get into Ben's piece, but I is it your organization, your group's objection based on where it's going now, you just not want it coming through Middle Tennessee at all, or is the idea thinking, look, where they've chosen is just not the best location. There has to be a better place for it. We understand you may want to still run it through here. If you got to do it, you got to do it fine, but find another place. Yes, absolutely. We're, we're, not, we're not opposed to natural gas. Um, I've got a lot of my family that work in the oil and gas industry. Uh, we are questioning the engineering decision. It's a bad engineering decision to place it in an area with so many residences. It's right next to uh, a metro City Park, well, the newest park, Paradise Ridge um, City Park, um, it's next to farms doing organic practice stuff. It really doesn't belong 
really in a county um, that is uh, a metropolitan county like uh, Davidson County. You know, we can't ask them since they're not here, but would you imagine they just got a good deal on this land and, and in the proximity, if they could squeeze it in there because of a lot of the resources nearby would make it uh, very, very good for them. I think it was a, the, the easy choice. They, they, okay. they, 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 you know, and, but I think that they're, I'm, I know that they have looked at alternative sites, and I think that's one of the reasons they don't want to come on is we can ask them questions about, you know, what other alternative sites have they looked at? Why did they reject those other sites? Uh, the facility, this facility is going to be one of the largest compressor stations in the country, in the top 5% by what we've uh, read. Uh, and it's unprecedented to have something that close to the, the, the string of houses on Greenbrier Road. Uh, you can hit a 7-iron, hit golf balls into the middle of where that facility okay. will so be. People so people living near it. And all right, let's do this. Let's, let's take a look at Ben's piece here, which kind of gives you an idea of the safety concerns and why, if you're someone living within a 7-iron <laughs> compressor, you may not want to live there. And then we'll get into more of the details. I've got some of what uh, Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company says, give the, you their side, and then certainly we'll get into more with you. And we can take some phone calls as well. But give you some background. Whether you live in Metro or not, you're going to want to see this piece because there may be one of these near you or coming to a place near you. Let's have a look. Tanya Dennis couldn't believe what happened to Sycamore Creek during the 2010 flood. It was amazing. So, yeah, I got my camera out. That water's moving at about 15 or 20 knots. I mean, the creek raged across her property in northern Davidson County. And my God, would you look at this. But she was most alarmed by what she yeah. found days later after the water went down. This is the exposed pipeline on the back side of the property. I had a lot of concerns about how exposed that pipeline had become. Her video shows a large section of natural gas pipeline that usually runs under her property was suddenly above ground. But Dennis says she never knew just how dangerous the situation was. This 2011 permit filed by the owner, Tennessee Gas Pipeline, reveals the exposed pipeline put the neighboring community at risk of a devastating explosion. The company warned if the pipeline was not repaired, it could lead to a potential explosion that would impact an area an approximate half mile in diameter. Well, that means I'm gone. My, my, my home and, and me and uh, several of my neighbors and all of my animals, I'm sure we would, we would just be gone. Read further and you see Dennis is right. The company states the social and economic costs of an explosion could be significant, including potential human fatalities in the adjacent community. Well, they're pretty much admitting that they can't uh, guarantee the viability of this thing and people's safety. That pipeline was eventually covered. It crosses under this creek. But now Tennessee Gas Pipeline and its parent company, Kinder Morgan, are proposing a massive new compressor station. That station won't connect to Dennis's line, but will pump more natural gas through lines near her house. I have a concern with the integrity of the line cording those documents. Ken Jakes is fighting the compressor station. Human fatalities. And made public records requests that found Tennessee Gas Pipeline's state application, revealing the potential for a major explosion. That's their words. That's not my words. That's Tennessee Gas Pipeline's words. Kinder Morgan sent us a statement distancing themselves from the permit application. They blamed an outside consultant for using his own words and said the company disagrees with his exaggerated view of a potential impact area in the event of a natural gas release. But the permit application clearly shows the signature of a Tennessee gas pipeline official who certified it as being true, accurate, and complete under possible penalties of fines and imprisonment. Well, I can guarantee you if you had a public hearing that that information would have never come out. It would have never come out. They're not going to say something like that was a risk factor involved. Before this is pushed on to council and passed, I urge you to ask this question. The company has faced strong opposition at public right. meetings on the proposed compressor station. I would beg you, please help us. Officials regularly tout the safety record of its pipes and the plan. But Kinder Morgan has faced tough questions about its safety record. The federal agency that regulates pipelines has cited Kinder Morgan for failing to inspect pipelines as required. And everybody knows if you slack on the maintenance, sure, your profits are going to be up. Kinder Morgan claimed its lines are safe. It spends hundreds of millions of dollars on maintenance 
and says its safety is as good or better than peers in its industry. It's exposed going down that hill. And but Tanya Dennis and Ken Jakes believe Tennessee Gas Pipeline's communication with the state reveals the true danger of natural gas lines going through Davidson County. I'm concerned about my family, but I'm concerned about all <clears throat> these individuals whose lives are in danger. The proposal goes through your backyard. <laughs> the, the gas, the the three big uh, gas pipelines that connect to the compressor proposed compressor station go 25 yards from my back door. 25 yards from your back door. All right, listen, um, and we'll open up the phone line 737-7587 if you want to jump in. But um, I guess the way it looks, I've got some of the statements from you know the company about the 82-acre Jolton site was selected as the best location for the facility. They say because of its proximity to the pipeline and it would have sound buffering and be in compliance with decibel requirements, according to, uh, I guess it's uh, Richard uh, Wheatley, a spokesman of uh, Kinder Morgan. Um, this is a rural farming and agricultural area and it would be out of the public's view and include outside lighting that would be downcasting during the majority of operation of the station. I don't think we're worried about the lighting. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You're not worried about lighting. Um, whether it's out of view or not, you'll know it's there and then the potential. That, what, what was described in, in you know, that consultant that they're trying to disavow is kind of scary. That's, and that's scary. And the point about that is that, uh, I, you know, again, as I said, the, the gas pipelines run through my backyard when I bought the house. I realized that they were there. I'm a science guy. I look at that and I realize that the risk, if the pipeline is well maintained, I think the risk is fairly low. There have been explosions. So because the pipeline runs for most of its length, it runs through unoccupied land. The explosions that have happened are often way out in the middle of nowhere and they leave a big huge crater and they shoot pipe far away. Um, you know, if ever, everyone mm -hmm. happens where there are people, that can be very, very bad, and there have been fatalities over the years. But uh, I, I sort of accept the risk, hoping that the company uh, does good maintenance and Kinder Morgan has not got a great reputation for maintenance um, and I you know uh, so you're even concerned with the existing pipeline that's there as it stands I, I'm, I'm, I'm not as concerned with the pipeline as long as they they do maintenance I am concerned for their ability to to keep up maintenance Kinder Morgan bought Tennessee gas pipeline so Tennessee gas pipeline mm -hmm. Kinder Morgan we hear those two uh, Tennessee Gas Pipeline is now wholly owned subsidiary of Kinder Morgan. Uh, they, they like to use the Tennessee Gas Pipeline a name, I think, because it implies that it's a Tennessee company, which it, mm -hmm. as far as I can tell, it never was. Uh, but um, Tennessee Gas Pipeline, I was sort of, I would meet the land management people who would come to maintain the gas pipeline, and I was actually fairly happy with uh, the guys I'd talked to, uh, were conscientious, they could tell me a lot about the history of the pipeline. Um, I felt that they were doing a good job. After 2012, when uh, Kinder Morgan took over, um, one of the guys who I'd been talking to for a few years who'd come out every and every couple mm -hmm. of years I'd see these guys. He came out and I said, you know, where's your where's your friend that used to come with you? And he says, oh, they got rid of him. He says they're downsizing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, he says they've cut back my uh, the the crew that we used to have that did the bush hogging to keep the the line clear. He says they've 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 taken that away. And uh, so he said they're they're going with contractors. And he says, you know that. I got the impression they were cutting back on maintenance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was a report about this in 2013 by, um, now this is not an environmentalist, this is Wall Street, uh, a guy named Kevin Kaiser for uh, Hedge Eye Risk Management, they're a Wall Street analyst firm. They raked Kinder Morgan over the coals for cutting back on maintenance. Uh, they. In the year before they bought Tennessee Gas Pipeline, Tennessee Gas Pipeline had paid $499 million to maintain their pipelines. After Kinder Morgan took over, they paid $132 million. Mm. So that's a 70% drop in maintenance. Uh, and the point of the Wall well, Street analysts. there are stockholders to be accountable to. There are <laughs> stockholders, but you know, um, the, 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 yeah. and the, the, but from the, 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 the guy from, from uh, the Wall Street was saying, this is not a good buy because if you cut maintenance costs that much, you know, tightening the belt is one thing. Cutting it that much, and they were cutting it very clearly to increase their dividend. Mm -hmm. um, and they said cutting it that much means that eventually that's going to come back to bite you either, and that you're going to have to uh, spend a lot on maintenance down the line. So he was saying as a long-term buy, it's not a good proposition. 
Listen, we'll take a break on that note. When we come back, we'll talk about how many jobs this can bring and what kind of money. And there's money always at the bottom of that, and you can you can discuss that. Whether I, I assume you don't think it's worth what it'll bring in tax revenue and the like, and uh, get more into some of the concerns about what it can happen. You've heard talk. I had some calls from people out with Walden's Puddle, which we all know about that and why they think it could affect you know their well-being there. We'll get into that, and we can take a few phone calls. Do you care? Do you want to know? I mean, give us a call if you live in the area, and if not, actually just paying attention. This is a case study on how you have to try to. Find if you're a citizen, what goes into your own backyard? We'll be back with more right after this.